Okay, everyone, in this podcast, I want to talk about something that many of you may have experienced and, and why it's so difficult to get diagnosed with hypothyroidism and even Hashimoto's in the current healthcare system. So, you know, I can tell you as a healthcare professional, healthcare practitioner, you know, when I run into patients, it's pretty rare we have someone say, yeah, I had symptoms and like right away they caught the caught the diagnosis. Typically what happens is people end up with not feeling well, they're tired, they're fatigued, they're depressed, they're not recovering from every day, they need excessive amounts of sleep, they start to have inflammation throughout their body, they're confused because they're thinking they're eating well and doing all the right things and they have this massive decline in their health and function that, that starts to progress over time and time. And then they go to the doctors and they, you know, tell them they're not feeling well and they may get prescribed like antidepressants or just told them they're getting older. And at some point they finally get diagnosed with hypothyroidism. And that's kind of exciting because now they think, okay, great. I'm diagnosed with hypothyroidism. I'm going to take this thyroid replacement. I'm going to feel great. And some do for a short period of time. So this is what's called the honeymoon phase. So when people first get diagnosed with hypothyroidism and they go on replacement, they actually have a significant impact now they feel. Their metabolism changes, they have more energy, and that would be great. It's just it doesn't last for a majority of them. When I say majority, I mean most of them. <laughs> so most people that end up finally being diagnosed with hypothyroidism and finally go on replacement don't necessarily continue to feel better on replacement, even if they change the prescription, even if they increase their dosage, there's still this underlying issue that's taking place. And this is part of, you know, normal mechanism of Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. Now, what's interesting is finally, when they get to the point where they get diagnosed with hypothyroidism, um, it really first counts on the clinician knowing what's going on and then once they get diagnosed with hypothyroidism, it's another big battle to finally get diagnosed with Hashimoto's because you have to do additional testing like thyroid antibodies to determine you actually have Hashimoto's. And most people that get diagnosed with hypothyroid, hypothyroidism never know that they actually have an autoimmune mechanism because they don't run thyroid antibodies in the conventional healthcare system. And then the question is like, why don't they? Well, one of the reasons they don't check thyroid antibodies is because it doesn't change treatment. <laughs> Whether you have thyroid antibodies positive or not, you're still gonna go on replacement and you're still gonna be checked once a year to see if you need to increase your dose of replacement. And the current model that have been established by endocrinologists that are used by general physicians and healthcare practitioners uh, is once you get diagnosed with hypothyroid, you come back every year you get tested and you want to see if you need more and they want to see if you need more replacement. And the reason that that criteria was put in place is because since 90% or more of hypothyroid patients have Hashimoto's as the cause, they expect over time that the autoimmune process will continue to destroy the thyroid gland. And probably within a year, you may need to increase your dose because more of your thyroid gland will be destroyed. And that's why they have that annual checkup that's done every year. So that is the current model. So why check antibodies? You're gonna come back every year anyways, and it's very expensive. So most, for sure HMOs will not cover a thyroid antibody test just because you're hypothyroid. The only time they would cover that is if you were in an acute thyroid crisis and had hyperthyroidism, like an overactive thyroid, like insomnia, palpitations, severe anxiety, um, tachycardia, you know, those are the things that would determine that they would actually um, run antibodies. But for people that just have thyroid, they're not typically done. So most people leave not knowing they actually have hypothyroidism. And this is where a lot of confusion comes in because, you know, they're taking replacement. They think they should be feeling better, but they're not. And part of the reason not feeling better is because the underlying cause of their condition wasn't just a low thyroid problem. The underlying cause of their condition was autoimmunity. And the autoimmunity had an effect of destroying their thyroid gland, but the autoimmunity is still gonna cause systemic inflammation throughout their whole body. And then the inflammatory response from autoimmunity can even impact how thyroid hormones work. Now, what's interesting, what researchers have found is that when people first go on thyroid hormones, thyroid hormones directly activate T cells and B cells 
in the immune system and they have a dampening effect. So part of the reason why a lot of people feel better when they go on thyroid replacement may not even be the thyroid replacement itself. It may be the fact that in that initial stage of uh, thyroid hormone um, uh, prescription, they actually have their inf immune inflammatory response that's that's calmed down. And uh, they get so-called honeymoon phase. But since their autoimmunity has never been addressed, the patient doesn't know that then maybe they should follow diet, nutrition, and lifestyle approaches to autoimmunity. And, you know, there's even um, physicians and healthcare professionals that think, well, you know, you have autoimmunity, there's nothing you can do for it. And there's there's some truth to that and also some, some really concerns with that uh, statement. So autoimmunity is incurable, meaning that you can never really cure it, but you can change the expression of it. So this is why some people say there's nothing you can do. Well, I think what they're referring to is there's nothing you can do to reverse it as of now, but you can certainly put autoimmunity into remission and feel like it's been reversed. But the only problem is they have a chance to flare up again, and that's the concept of autoimmunity. So autoimmunity is known as an incurable disease, but it can go into remission where it may feel like if it's the remission is significant enough that you don't have the condition anymore. But there's always that vulnerability for it to trigger for anything that impacts your immune integrity, your immune health. So why does it take so long to get diagnosed? What, 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 what's the issue? Uh, well, one of the issues is, and we're not here to bash on any kind of specialty because everyone is honestly doing their best and everyone is working with something that's not easy to diagnose. So let's talk about a few things to understand about hypothyroidism Hashimoto's. First of all, it's a slow process. So people don't typically develop hypothyroidism Hashimoto's overnight. It can happen. Some people get acute thyroiditis and develop it overnight from some kind of trigger that flares up their immune system. But for most people that develop Hashimoto's, they have it develop over many years, very, very slowly. Their autoimmune disease turns on, they have antibodies produced, they go into that silent phase that progresses into a state where they start to have some inflammation, destruction against their thyroid gland. And while this is all happening, their thyroid gland is still functioning. So even though the autoimmune response is destroying their thyroid gland and impacting the thyroid metabolism to some degree, when a doctor checks their thyroid function by looking at their levels of thyroid stimulating hormone and T4 and T3, they still look normal. But at that stage, the autoimmune disease is still there. It's causing significant inflammation. It's causing problems, but it's really hard to diagnose that because even in the early stages, when you just check thyroid function, there's still enough integrity of some of those thyroid cells to produce hormones, but it's not just about producing hormones. It's the autoimmunity that's causing a lot of the patient's inflammation and symptoms. And that autoimmune process that's causing inflammation and thyroid gland destruction is also causing inflammation in the brain that is systemic. They have brain fog and can't think and can't focus and they get depression from the inflammatory response. And that inflammation can even impact um, their joints and their body and the recovery rate and that autoimmune inflammatory response can start to break down their tight junctions and they start to get food sensitivities and reacting to foods and getting very fatigued with certain food proteins. But at the same time, they're not hypothyroid yet because their thyroid gland hasn't been destroyed. So that's one of the reasons why it's so frustrating for people in the healthcare system to get diagnosed because the healthcare system is looking for is stage three autoimmunity where the gland has been destroyed enough so they can actually th show hypothyroidism. So the transition from silent autoimmunity where someone just has antibodies first show up and to the point where they actually get thyroid gland destruction, that can take many years. <laughs> so you can have a person suffering from five years, 10 years before they finally have enough thyroid gland destruction where they have symptoms. And this is why it's if you, you know, if you suspect you may have Hashimoto's and your thyroid levels are normal, then actually just specifically check thyroid antibodies. That would be TPO antibodies and thyroid globin antibodies. And if those are positive, that would suggest that you have Hashimoto's. And studies have clearly shown over time, for sure, you're going to develop hypothyroidism, right? So it's almost a predictive antibody response at, that, at, at this time. That's what they're known as, these autoantibodies, uh, are now known as predictive markers that if they show up in the early stages with no symptoms, we know over time that they're going to lead to 
to disease. So thyroid antibodies, they lead into, at some point, causing actual hypothyroid dysfunction. So, so this is one of the reasons why it's so difficult to diagnose. And HMOs are going to just approve running antibody tests, so that that could be a problem as well. Now, another reason why it's sometimes really hard to diagnose Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism is because most people won't jump into Hashimoto's first. They'll jump into hypothyroidism, and once someone's been diagnosed hypothyroid, that's when they'll check antibodies to see if it's Hashimoto's, if they even do that. But the problem with Hashimoto's is, is that in the very early stages, Hashimoto's has relapsing remitting responses. It flares up, destroys thyroid gland tissue, and then it calms down. It flares up, destroys thyroid gland tissue, and then it calms down. And then these flare-ups cause injury to the thyroid gland tissue, and the thyroid gland tissue has thyroid hormones within it, and then those thyroid hormones get released in the bloodstream, and then they have this mixture of symptoms of being hypo and hyperthyroid. So when their thyroid hormone levels are low, they get depression and constipation and lack of uh, muscle endurance, lack of cognitive endurance, uh, mood changes. And then when they get a, a flare-up of their autoimmune response, the thyroid attacks, their immune system attacks the thyroid gland and thyroid hormones are released. That's when they start to have symptoms of anxiety and nervousness and palpitations and insomnia and, and those things. They go kind of back and forth. Well, the problem is the way that you first get diagnosed hypothyroid is you have a high TSH. So let's say we have someone that has a high TSH, they're hypothyroid, they've had enough thyroid destruction where they're in a hypothyroid state. And if they were to measure their lab marker for hypothyroidism, which is TSH, the TSH levels are out of range, they're abnormal, they're high. Then TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone, it's released by the pituitary gland to stimulate the thyroid gland to work. So when the thyroid gland is not working, TSH is very high because pituitary is stimulating those cells to try to make hormones. So let's say someone has that mechanism. They have high TSH and they're hypothyroid. Well, if they go in and get tested while they're in a hypothyroid state, they will get diagnosed as hypothyroid. Perfect. Then they found it. But what also happens is sometimes people with Hashimoto's, they get a flare-up. Their immune system breaks down their thyroid gland, and as it breaks down their thyroid gland, thyroid hormones are released in the bloodstream. And as thyroid hormones are released in the bloodstream, there's a negative feedback loop, which tells the pituitary, hey, we don't need the thyroid gland stimulated because we have hormones in the bloodstream. And now their TSH levels that are abnormal go back to a normal reference range, and they look like their thyroid gland is working. Their thyroid gland isn't working. The only reason that their TSH came down was because the immune system broke down tissues that then caused the release of thyroid hormones in the bloodstream, and that's why their thyroid stimulating hormone levels came down. And when they go in to get their thyroid tested, at that period, when they're in that state, that looks like their TSH is normal. So then they go, okay, we'll come back in a year. And they come back in a year, and now they've been in a hypothyroid state for, for that period of time. So another reason why it's so difficult to get diagnosed with hypothyroidism Hashimoto's is not only is it a slow process, uh, uh, not only do people don't check antibodies, but TSH levels fluctuate throughout that part of that process, okay? And the other things that we're dealing with in the current healthcare system is that, you know, thyroid stimulating hormone or thyroid measurements are not part of routine lab work. So it's not done. Like you really have to have a physician that's very sharp to look for it, and you really have to have a patient that's extremely motivated and compelling to ask their healthcare prof their professional, their doctor, to order the lab test. We also know that HMO is very reluctant to run unnecessary tests because the whole goal of an HMO is everyone contributes money, and the way they keep costs down is they don't run unnecessary tests. So with an HMO system, it's really, really, really hard to have early preventive diagnoses like thyroid antibodies. So it would be unheard of to walk into an HMO system and say you have symptoms of hypo and hyperthyroid and you want to get your thyroid antibodies checked now. Because thyroid antibodies, you know, they, they can, I mean, uh, uh, laboratories will charge uh, hospitals and insurance companies $200, $400 for each test. And if it's just screening for a two to $500 test, uh, it's not a part of the approval process. The other issue is when you look at HMOs, 
In addition, with policy not running these uh, TSH or antibody tests with people who have thyroid symptoms on a routine basis, is that you know when you look at how the HMO system works, each HMO system has a certain amount of doctors in them. And each doctor at the end of each year is gonna be assessed to how much cost they had per patient. So if you see, let's say you have two doctors and, and within a year those two doctors saw, let's just say a thousand patients. And both of them are working with, let's say, just primary care. And at the end, one doctor had twice as many, twice as much lab tests as the other doctor. So they saw the same amount of patients. They both, let's say, had no malpractice issues, but they just saw that the second doctor was costing the HMO much, much, much more money doing the same thing as the first doctor. Well, those are the people that usually get cut. So another reason is that doctors themselves that are in HMOs don't want to run unnecessary tests. They don't want their cost per patient to go up. So they only do things if they're absolutely necessary and uh, not there to necessarily be preventive. So that's another reason why uh, people take a long time to, to get diagnosed. So these, these variables are all part of it. But the good news is if you finally get to the point that you've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, and you now know it's Hashimoto's, now you have options. Now you know you can do some things with that nutrition lifestyle to modulate the expression of your autoimmunity and uh, make some change in your overall health. If you need some direction on what those strategies may be, um, please check out uh, a course that I put together called Hashimoto Solving the Puzzle. It's at drknews.com, D-R-K-N-E-W-S.com. And thank you for listening to the podcast.